Number eight, uh, statistics teacher claimed that the mean score for a third exam average was uh, 80. So the mean score, it's important to note some of these keywords. After collecting data from students in the past six semesters of teaching, he found that the, the mean for that sample um, was 78.8 and the standard deviation is 76 or 7.6 with an N of um, 173. At the 0.05 significance level, test the teachers claim that the mean scores averaged 80%. So um, that's, the, that's the statement that we're testing. And so if we go through the hypothesis test, let's uh, go through the eight steps that we're looking for uh, when we do hypothesis tests. Step one is to state the claim. The claim is uh, the mean score. Uh, so the mean score is mu is equal to 80 percent and so I would just put 80 here because uh, these things should have been percentages and I guess this was a little bit of a typo in the, uh, <coughs> on the on the actual worksheet and it's also good to whenever you can put down your uh, claim in words and in words our claim is uh, mean score for third exam is 80. Okay. Okay, so the second part, number two, the opposite is a not equal to, mu is not equal to 80. And the third and important step is to identify which one is your null hypothesis and which one is your alternative hypothesis. So out of the first two statements that you have written so far, what you want to do is you've got to figure out which one is your null hypothesis. In this case, the null hypothesis is going to be the original claim. So we want to make a note of that by just labeling the alternative, the null hypothesis as a claim. And um, the alternative in this case is the opposite, which is not equal to business. So this is the first three steps. Uh, step number four is to identify your significance level, 0.05 in this case. It's uh, explicitly stated as 0.05. Uh, I just want to make a note that if there is no significance level in a problem, then we just assume it's 0.05. Um, and the test statistic that we will be using here is going to be um, I guess we should think about doing a, a t-test for this because we don't know the population standard deviation. So we're going to use a t-test statistic. So our t-test um, is going to be x bar minus mu divided by uh, s over square root of n. Let's put a parentheses around this denominator because that's going to be important when you're doing the calculations in your calculator. So uh, step six step six is asking us to uh, find our actually do the computation. Oh, the other test statistics uh, statistics that we'll need here is already given in the problem. We need x bar which is 78.8. We're going to need uh, S, which is 7.6. And we're going to need N, which is 173. All right. Um, 
now to actually compute the test statistic we're going to um, take our calculators and use this formula to find it so our calculator and the formula that we're going to need to use is uh, x bar at 78.8 minus mu which is 80 and I'm gonna do all this in one step so I put a parentheses around the numerator and then here I have um, the denominator and this is uh, where the parentheses around the denominator is also important I need s which is 7.6 and that is divided by the square root of n which is 173 and your test statistic is negative 2.06077 we'll call it 2.077 I suppose we can just take a copy of the screenshot and then paste it on alright so this is our test statistic we need still need to find our critical values and then after we find our critical values we can draw so the critical value we'll need to get from our table, our t table, because we're doing the t test, and this is uh, 0.05 and two tails. So we're looking down the middle here, 0.05 and two tails, and then we're looking at 173. Um, so you actually have a choice here between 100 and 200. Uh, but just rounding, I guess 173 would be closer to 200, so I would take this uh, 1.972 on your T table. 1.972. So let's call our critical values uh, CV to be uh, 1.972. Oh, what was it again? 1.972. Um, whoops. And a thing that to to notice is that it, this is a two-tail test, so it's positive and negative. 1.972. So in our graph, we would actually have. Uh, and this is technically not a normal distribution because this is a t distribution but it looks like a normal curve our test our critical values are uh, negative 1.972 and positive 1.972 and our test statistic is here so it's negative 2.076 or 77 and it is in the critical region so it's important to to uh, bring our conclusion uh, number seven step number seven here and we would probably want to say in words um, why you're making the conclusion you're making. So we would say since uh, the test statistic is in the critical region, we reject the null hypothesis. And um, I can clearly see that in the drawing here, 
but it also wouldn't hurt to say it in words. Okay, so step number eight. Our final wording. Uh, we go to the flowchart that we have in in the book um, that ask us a couple of questions. Uh, the first thing they ask us is that the, does the original claim contain a condition of equality? And we can just say uh, yes, it does, because our original claim says mu is equal to. And then um, next question is, do you reject the null hypothesis? And then we say yes, we do. And so we go to that chart and says uh, we have have sufficient evidence to reject the claim that and then we want to say the claim in words the mean score for the third exam is 80 so this is our conclusion and we're done with the problem and I, I forgot to mention in the beginning that this is the traditional method that we did and um, so if you were doing the p-value method, which I'd have to say it's it's easier than this, uh, what we can do for the p-value method is that all the steps are going to be the same except for uh, a couple of steps in step six and step seven would be different. So the p-value method would uh, would be set up the same way. You'd have to state your claim and figure out your null and alternative hypothesis etc etc but then when it comes time to to computing the the test statistic or the p-value um, I'd suggest you use your calculator and so let's take out our calculators and let's go through the p-value method in the calculator um, and I want you to remember this number negative 2.077 so that when we do our calculations in the calculator we'll see that it's it gives us the same value so this is a t-test and uh, we don't have data in the calculator but we do have statistics we're testing for 80 and our x-bar was 78.8 and our standard deviation was 7.6 and our n was 173 a large n uh, this option for your calculator the t-test is is uh, identifying what symbol you're using for your alternative hypothesis in this case we're using the not equal to symbol for our alternative hypothesis the drawing here doesn't really give us much of a picture uh, so I always just try to analyze numbers by hitting calculate so calculate and this is information and if you look at the T value there you'll see that it's uh, it's the same t-value that we computed by hand so our p-value method is asking us to find the p-value and so we can find our p-value here notice that the p-value is stated as p but when you write it down on paper it'd be nice if you just write pv because P, there's a lot of different P's around. So uh, P value is uh, 0 0.039. And usually, for good measure, this is what I would like to see um, in your exam if you're using a calculator. You're saying that you're using a t-test. So that's the calculator command that you're doing. And the results that come out is your uh, test statistic t is equal to negative 2.077 and your p-value uh, comes out and then you can rewrite all these other statistics here but that's the same statistics that we inputted anyway so it's really not that important uh, the other big change is step 7 between the P traditional method and the p-value method and the reasoning for your rejecting I mean the results should be the same but you're going to reject the null hypothesis uh, since the p-value 
it's uh, 039 is less than uh, the significance level which is 0 0.05 we reject the null hypothesis so the p-value method and the traditional method should give the same result um, it's just done a little bit differently so if you were to do the p-value method here you'd have probably less steps and you won't have to draw this drawing you don't have to use a table to find a critical value you just find the p-value and compare it with a uh, significance level so this is a p-value method um, so that's it uh, the same conclusion uh, whether you're using the p-value method or the traditional method and that's how it should be okay so that is uh, problem number eight.